Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com. I want to talk about a myth that gets spread around a lot, and that is that if you reduce the volume, if you work at a lower level, you'll actually cut out the room. You'll be able to hear better because you excite the room less, and also it'll have less of an impact on what you're hearing. Now, it's true that you actually hear better at lower volumes, but I, what I want to show you today is that that has nothing to do with how the room responds. Let's have a look. So in acoustics, we describe the relationship between the direct sound from your speakers and the reverberant field, the response of your room with a variable called the critical distance. It basically works like this. If you imagine sound coming from your speakers, with every doubling of distance, that sound will reduce in volume by half, by 60 dB. That's the inverse square law. At the same time, a reverberant field builds up in your room. You can sort of think of it like a noise floor. That means that wherever you are in the room, the sound level is the same. Now that some distance away from the speakers, the level of the direct sound will be the same as the level of the reverberant field. And that's called the critical distance. If you move further away from the speakers than the critical distance, you'll hear more room. And if you move closer to your speakers than the critical distance, you hear more speaker. Now, the critical distance is actually really well defined, and it can be described by this equation. There's a couple of interesting variables in here. The first one being Q, which is the directivity of your speakers. It describes the dispersion of your speaker. The second variable is S, which is the surface area of the room, and alpha, the average absorption coefficient of that area. The thing is, nowhere in this equation is there a variable for sound pressure. The critical distance, the relationship between the direct sound and the response from your room is completely independent of volume. And it's easy to imagine if you increase the level from your speakers, the direct sound increases, and at the same time, the reverberant field increases in level. The critical distance, the relationship between the direct sound and the room stays the same no matter what volume is being played into that room. But there is one interesting thing that this equation tells us, and that is that you can improve what you hear. You can move away the critical distance from the speakers by either increasing the absorption in your room, this is nothing new, but you can also improve what you hear from your speakers by improving the dispersion pattern of your speakers, by basically picking a dispersion pattern that suits the shape and size of your room. And in fact, there's an entire industry built around this. It's called live sound, PA systems. These guys build sound systems that have a dispersion pattern that is suitable for the space that they're playing in. That's how they can get away in having good sound without acoustics in the room. And this is funny because in the studio world with studio monitors, anything everybody ever talks about is getting a wide dispersion pattern from your speaker. And I don't think this makes much sense, to be honest. But getting back to the point, reducing the level that you work at, working at a lower volume does improve what you hear. It improves the perception of punch, of groove, of dynamics, of transience. The question is why? And in my opinion, this has to do with the Weber-Fechner law, a general rule of psychophysics that relates the magnitude of a stimulus to the intensity that we actually perceive. What this shows us is that the higher the volume gets, the less sensitive we become to volume changes. So if you turn down the volume, you actually become more sensitive to volume changes, so you're better able to discern what's going on in the music. And that's why it's so much easier to do balances, to set compression, to figure out what your transients are doing at low volumes. It has nothing to do with the room. It's just psychoacoustics. It's how your brain and your hearing machine perceive sound at lower volumes. Of course, there are other benefits as well. You can work for longer periods of time because it's less fatiguing. You probably bother your neighbors less. So I guess the final question is how low is a low volume? How low do you have to go? 
and there isn't really a concrete number you can put on this but as a rule of thumb if you can hold a conversation comfortably while you, you're listening to your music that's a good level you should also try and reducing it even less like going really low in volume because the lower in volume you go the better you'll be able to discern dynamics and it's really interesting what happens to the perception of transients and compression and all this stuff when you're listening at a volume where you can barely hear what's going on so give that a shot as well so if there's one thing i want you to take away from this video it's that you should definitely work at lower volumes but that has nothing to do with how the room responds in fact it has everything to do with psychoacoustics and how we perceive transients and dynamics and volume changes at lower volumes but I'm also really interested in how you actually work, what your experience has been with volume. So let me know in the comments below what volume you work at and why. What has been your experience working with volume? And as always, if you thought this was helpful and if you want to learn more about acoustics and treating your room and working with your room, getting more confident in sound, getting more confident in your work, come find me on acousticsinsider.com. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.